Yeah, so uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Um, very brief, I come from the database business. I was one of the uh, original uh, people behind Sybase, which of course is very famous to the SAP people. So um, Mark Hoffman, who was the founder of Sybase, is my vice chairman of Dakadu. I sold my previous company to Thomson Reuters, where I was doing sustainability rating. So I was rating companies based on their sustainability. So I thought if you can rate sustainability of companies, you can rate the sustainability of human beings. We started in 2010. We have now scored over 300 million man years of clinical data. And we are, as you heard before, a truly global company. We are around 75 persons in the company. Why did I come up with the idea to found Dakadu? Because I have five lovely kids myself, and I was a bit concerned that they sit all day and look on that screen. Um, despite my uh, big weight, I actually do a lot of sports. And you know, I saw my kids you know, getting more and more squared uh, looking onto their smartphone. So I love this evolution, and you can see. Uh, and I'm actually very concerned about, you know, we were made to move. And I don't care if it's 8,000 or 10,000 steps or whatever it is, but we were biologically engineered not to look like the last person. In America now, it's about 40% that are obese. China, 40 years ago, had 1% diabetes. Now they have 10% diabetes in China. I'm just back from China, so you can imagine the costs that are coming. So basically, what do we do or who are we? We provide a rock-solid academic validated health score. We have filed over 90 patents around health scoring. So we license our health score both to life and health insurance companies globally. We take data security super serious. So I'm at least in Switzerland, a little bit of a known person, so I really appreciate my privacy. So we don't license any data, we don't sell any data. So basically, since we started, we never took advertising money, nothing. We were the first software company in Europe to be fully HIPAA compliant, so we encrypt all data. Number three is that we did not, because we heard before AI just became fashion, we've been working with AI since day number one. So we have built in 4,000 AI rules into the Dakadu system. So we provide people with a health score, and then we use machine learning and AI for building lifestyle navigation. We made our system public from day one, so we have an API, so people can program their own applications because we don't claim to know everything. I call it the ABC of digital health. So basically, it's around algorithms. So the health score, as I said before, is constituted of over 300 million man years of clinical data that we have scored. Number two, be engaged, meaning using gamification and point systems. I call this the something for something economy. I don't believe people should share their health data if they don't want to. And if they do, they should get something in exchange. And last but not least, as I mentioned before, lifestyle navigation. So we have sold about one, tri uh, uh, yes, uh, one billion um, AI sensors or uh, IoT sensors worldwide for lifestyle navigation that you can integrate today. That is going to be a heck of a lot more. So the latest Gartner Group study is predicting there will be 25 uh, billion IoT sensors you know, that will track some kind of health. One of my key motivations is, of course, the explosion of healthcare cost. So I'm what you call a social entrepreneur. As you heard before, I built the world's largest sustainability database looking at water usage, energy usage, etc. I am super concerned about the cost of healthcare worldwide, and I think the only way we can drive it down is by digital and that we share knowledge and that, you know, if you have cancer or rare disease, you will share all your data with anyone. But if you have other things, you're not willing to share. And of course, Germany, and I've been a lot on German TV, is a very dangerous country for digital health. It took you guys 20 years, uh, you know, to get into the digital health. You're still not there, medical record system, etc. So, and there was a nice article in Financial Times today, how much is a life insurance supposed to know about you? You could also turn it the other way around and say there's an asymmetry in the data that you know and that the insurance doesn't know. 
So I could today go down to the corner of uh, Heidelberg, Wiesbaden, wherever, and I do a DNA sequencing of myself. Now I know I have a deadly cancer. I do not, knock on wood, but you get the point. Next day, I call my life insurance, MetLife, and I tell them I want a $20 million life insurance, and you know, a year later, I die of cancer, and MetLife pays out the $20 million. And that's why I show this joke, because you, know, you can be a dog on the internet, and nobody knows that you are a dog. So basically, we have an asymmetry now, and that asymmetry of data will basically bring the life insurance out of business if we do not create a new legal framework. So today, uh, health insurances, I have many of them as my clients around the world, United Healthcare Group, Cigna, and what they all called. So basically, before the year start, they have spent 68% of their money. So you have to imagine, I mean, I invest my own little money in startups, and you know, would you invest in a company that has already spent 68% of its budget before the year gets started? That's a pretty bad business. So everybody talks about DNA sequencing. I, I gave an interview to a big British magazine earlier this morning, and they were like, should insurances be allowed to see your DNA? And I say, hell no. So basically, your DNA belongs to you. That's not so much my point with this slide, which is you know, from WHO. You cannot change your genes, right? So if you have cancer, if you're born handicapped, you cannot change that. But 40% of your life, according to WHO, is based around your lifestyle. And there you can make a significant change. I spoke at the Mobile World in Barcelona, and before me was the telecommunication of, uh, minister of Korea who showed this slide, so it's not my slide. But what, yep, I'm, I'm getting done. Uh, so basically, you had the Fitbits. I'm wearing the brand new uh, you know, smart uh, ring, so I have my heart rate, everything in real time on the ring. I don't have to wear a band, nothing, and that goes in in scoring. You have the Dexcom chip where you can put into your you know, hand, and you have all your blood readings in real time. So all this would only create better health scores, and we need public APIs so we can share that data that Da Vinci originally put together and basically what we've done is we've built a complete platform from a fun walking game to a whole lifestyle and AI-based navigation system all the way over to accelerated underwriting and dynamic pricing of health risk. So I finish off. Basically, I believe in the future we will have health scores and we will have what I call raw risk. So raw risk is, of course, where the healthcare comes in. So today, Dakatu is not only scoring you know, mortality, but we score morbidity. So we already score the world's 10 most common chronic diseases and, you know, provide the raw risk around those models. I'm on time and thank you very much.